Hello everyone, this is Akio from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design and I am showing you today how to create a cufflink with the texture which is created in Grasshopper. Let's get started. The cufflink will be oval so I will create an ellipse. Ellipse center 0 and I will make a 20 by 70 millimeter oval. So here is where the surface covers. So I like to make a surface which is a little bit bigger than this oval. Uh, you will see why I'm doing this later on. Surface rectangle from the center and I'll create a surface to just uh, cover enough to um, this oval. Yeah, we could maybe this is enough. I will use the texture which is created by Atsuo Nakajima, who is a co-author of this book. And he has a website, uh, apricraft.com, which uh, I pasted on the bottom of the description. And this is a page. I know this is Japanese, but uh, you can maybe read it with a Google Translate. So these are all the textures he uh, created with a collaboration with uh, Hiroshima uh, University Graduate School. So uh, Eva was showing you one of the texture and she created a ring. I think this is uh, this Hachinosu. But today I'm going to use Renga. Renga means brick in Japanese. So I will, uh, I, I think this is a very cool texture. So I'm going to download it and I will modify the design and uh, utilize it for my cufflink. I just downloaded and opened this Renga file in the Grasshopper file. And uh, here you will see some of the descriptions in Japanese and all the uh, definitions. What I'm going to use is those first two groups, and the third one is uh, this uh, image. So I will disable this component. Okay. This first group of the value list, you can specify the number for X and Y axes, and uh, the pattern is uniformed or random. Also how the each panel is tilted and ratio of the top and a side panel of the each brick. And second part is an input for different surfaces. I will set this surface to input number 5. Set one surface. And I will hide this surface. And then I have to change this value list to number 5. I wanted to see the change of the pattern as I am changing the value list. So it may be a good idea to have a display color. And connect to this component. And instead of pink, let me, I use this a little grayish color. Okay, here we go. Now this value list is set X11 and Y20. But I wanted to change it to X8 and Y is 7.
eight and seven and click this button to proceed. Here we go. So now it says X is an eight and Y axis is a seven. Then I will change the perspective view so that you can see the each pattern better. So it looks like it's kind of uniform, but actually it's not, it's a random. But I would change this each value list so that you can see how it's updated. Let me just play with uh, some numbers. So this one, the angle. So I will uh, move this angle a little bit larger. And then every time I play with this value list, I have to click for processing. And then I don't know if you can see it. Now, especially this one, this one is higher than the other side. So you can change that to make it more. And other thing is, this is the relationship between four side wall and top surface. So right now it's at 0 0.80, but if I move it, for example, a little bit smaller, so that top rectangle gets smaller. Like this. Yeah, but I like how it was. So I will move it back to point around, around point 0.80. And then instead of random, I would change this pattern to um, uniformed. Then click this again. Okay, here we go. So this is, um, you can see it better. So I kind of like this texture. Looks like a kind of uh, the fish scale, it is uniformed, it's tilted, so this is definitely higher than the other side. So let's say I like, I like this. Okay, then uh, I will bake this, the surface, right click and bake. Okay, so now it is ready. So here, I think this is very cool. The next step is, instead of using the surface as this direction, I will rotate it 45 degrees. Let me turn off the play view on a grasshopper. Okay, so now I will split this surface with this oval. That's why I made this surface a little larger because I need an enough surface around the oval when rotated. The next what I would do is to duplicate the border, go to the curve from object, and duplicate the border of this surface. Then I get the curve, and I would take this curve, and I will extrude it. Then go to the front viewport and create a line. I will split the surface with this line. And I duplicate the border of this the surface I just made. Offset this curve about one and a half millimeter outside. And I make a surface. I can easily loft it.
great. Okay, then I would take the border and extrude it down about, I guess, 2.5 millimeter. Okay, I would join them and cap. Here we go. Then next is the parts. I have a parts curve. Let me bring up this top part. And I will extrude these parts at the both sides. Uh, two millimeter total, so each side is a one millimeter. And then this one, I would say, this width, I would scale one d two percent. Then turn off the curve. And the fitted edges, maybe 0.15 millimeter. Looks good. I have a circle for the hole. And I will extrude this one. Well, Usually we have to make a hole, but uh, I will leave it just as a cylinder for the rendering purpose. Fill the edges of this cylinder. 0.2 Okay. Then bring back the top and I will fill the edge of this one. Also 0.2 And then Boolean Union, this top and this part. Change layer. Then this cuff ring is ready. The pattern is made in Grasshopper. I hope you liked the today's contents. Please like and subscribe our channel. And I will see you on the next video.